quick, look at this gun. It's a Smith & Wesson equalizer and it's made for your grandma. I took it out, burned it down, and I'm ready to share my results with you. But before we do, a flashback. When I became a firearms instructor, my mentor challenged me with elderly, disabled, and physically weak students. I saw firsthand the challenges they had with shooting and buying firearms. The Smith & Wesson equalizer is made for those people, but I'll let you in on a secret. You might like it too. Most of the time, when I go to the range to review guns, I have a really good idea of what to expect. With this gun though, I did not expect this. The Equalizer is an evolution of the Smith & Wesson Easy line of pistols. The 380 and the 9mm Easy were great for a few reasons. One, easy to load magazines. Two, easy to rack the slide. And three, big enough to shoot comfortably for most hand sizes. And it met the needs of those students in our classes. But with a capacity of eight rounds, nah, mm -mm. And that's where the Equalizer comes in. It sports the same features of that Easy line, but it fixes the capacity issues. In the box, it comes with 10, 13 and 15 round double stack magazines. The Equalizer magazines are not as easy to load as the easy single stacks. So to balance capacity and ease, they put an Uplula mag loader in the box with the gun. And that is an excellent trade-off in my opinion. And you're watching the video, so. Sorry, that's what you're stuck with. Now those magazines, the 13 and the 15 round, they actually have extensions on them and the 10 round is a flush fit into the bottom of the grip. I like the feel of the bigger magazine, the 15 round, and I would likely never ever use the 13 or the 10. And it also uses Shield Plus magazines if you already have some of those. Let's get back to the ergonomics. There's two kinds of people in this world, 18% grip angle people and absolute freaks. Uh, I mean, Glock people. All jokes aside, some people shoot better with a 22 degree grip angle, Glocks, and some people just shoot better with the 18%, 1911s, Smith & Wesson, m ps and that's where I come in. I'm in the latter. 1911 grip angle for life. Which group are you in? Start a fight in the comments. No, seriously, start a fight. The grip texture is the standard that you've come to expect from Smith & Wesson, and I really like it. Some folks might want it a little bit more aggressive, but I haven't noticed any issues, and if it rubs up against my little tiny belly, then it's not a big deal and it doesn't hurt me at all. It's enough without being too much. And it doesn't ruin my shirts when I conceal carry. But your gut does. Hey. With an improved capacity, let's go ahead and run through the rest of it. I found it to be really accurate. For some reason, I can just burn it down with this gun. It's just, it fits my hand better. I was able to transition between targets as fast as the trigger would pull. And even though it looks like I'm shooting willy-nilly, I had 38 hits out of 39 shots in this string. The recoil with all magazine sizes and grip extensions is easily manageable. And even at 100 yards, I could hit half Ipsic steel targets. Ultimately, the small size is not an issue. No matter what she tells you, stay strong, Kings. Now the curved trigger is actually a departure as well. Single piece, no blades or hinges. It pulls rearward off of a pivot at the top, has a short take up and a chunky break just over five pounds. Also has a longer than expected and pretty quiet reset. So that part, not a huge fan of. Sitting at my desk writing this, I was like, eh, the trigger leaves a little bit to be desired. But you know what, uh, shooting it, I shot it really well. So it's a trigger, it's fine. Now I'd like to draw your attention to some of the safety features that are meant to appeal to an older and probably less experienced audience. Although some of the features might seem like check marks for marketing purposes, they are worth mentioning. Orange followers in the magazine, clearly visible when checking the chamber. From the top, you can easily tell it's loaded with a tiny window cut at the back of the chamber. You can see brass through it. It comes in two versions, one with the safety and one without the safety. Without. Thank you. Since this is an internal hammer-fired gun, it utilizes a grip safety as a drop safe measure. The grip safety does not fully depress inside the grip, so even if you get a bad grip, you're probably gonna depress it all the way in. I've seen some people complain about that actually, that it was hurting their hand, but I, I, it didn't hurt mine. I guess they're just sissies, oh, bitches. And it disassembles without pulling the trigger. While not directly associated with safety, I wanna mention that the slide serrations are the biggest and deepest, biggest and deepest. that I have ever seen on a Smith & Wesson. I love them. Easy for everything from somebody with Arthur arthritic hands to somebody wearing gloves to grab and rack the slide. So you and I might not care about the safety stuff as much, but they also went above and beyond in the stuff we might care about. It has a pick rail to add lights, lasers, dipping sauce trays, whatever you might want to put. And it's also cut for optics using the RMSC pattern. And let me add, no mounting plates. Thank you, Smith & Wesson. I put a TLR 7A sub light on it and a Bushnell RXU200 ultra compact red dot. This has the shortest window that I've ever seen and it's, well, it's in the name, it's micro compact. The stock sights on this gun are the standard driftable three dot sights that they put on a lot of their stuff. It's like when you're hungry, but nothing really sounds good. A sandwich will do the job, but it's not what you're excited about. Sandwich does sound pretty good. Hey, make me a sandwich. More coming soon on this dot. Uh, 
See, the sets are so boring that I'm thinking about food even while I'm doing the review. Because you're fat. Okay, you know what? That's not nice. This gun is clearly made for concealed carry. So what's important here? Reliability. I had zero problems on multiple range trips using every kind of nine millimeter that I could think of. And thanks to True Shot Gun Club for the ammo. No, for real, give me a solid bro. Concealability, yes. I don't know why I said it like that. It's easy to conceal. In fact, it stacks up surprisingly well with the competitors. These graphs are from my favorite website, handgunhero.com, but most importantly, it fits well in my fanny pack. Don't you bully me. Don't, don't, don't. And capacity, yes, we've talked about it, 15 rounds max and 10 and 13 round magazines as well. Aftermarket options are limited, but good. No trigger upgrades that I was able to find yet, but it does fit lights, red dots, lasers, if you're into that kind of thing. And since it fits shield plus holsters, there's a ton of options. Mine came from Black Rhino Concealment. Now let's break it down. The pros, optics ready with no mounting plates. The future's now, old man. Was that insensitive? It is a great option for all levels of experience. I know that a lot of you like experienced gun dudes out there right now are like, no, I'm never gonna get that. It's like CZ or Staccato or like, SIG. Shut up, man. Like this is a great gun. And it shoots really well, like surprisingly well. Like I was kind of blown away by how fast and accurate I could shoot it. Like you see it in this video, like it, shoots well. And now the cons. Look, it's got three different size magazines. I don't understand why. Just give me three 15 rounds. I don't want the 13 or the 10. But then again, I guess at the same time, like they got to send that out because maybe somebody's hand is a little bit too small for a 15. They don't want that or they want to conceal carry and they want the flush fit 10 round. I don't know. I just want three 15 rounds. I don't know why they can't give me that or give me the, at least the option to buy that. I just have two mags that I'm never going to use. And now I got to go buy two more 15 rounders. I bet the mag shack has them. They do. <laughs> Ultimately, I'd like to see textured areas on the side of the slide so you can index your finger or your thumb. Just think gas pedal. I think that's a great feature and probably not too difficult to do. And you probably see it in the video, but big hands have trouble dropping the magazines. Since it has mag extensions and the grip ends somewhere right around here for me, it catches and I have had to strip it free a lot more than I've had it drop free. This is not isolated to this gun specifically, but it is something that happened to me a lot. It also pinched me twice. I'm okay. Thank you for asking. This is going in my EDC rotation as a capable and reliable option with the added benefit that I can bring more people to the 2A light. And if you like this video, you may want to see our other Smith & Wesson videos and you can just click right here-ish, I think. Oh, it's playing right now. Just, watch, just stay here, watch it with me. He's hot.